Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Masaro Method. Today, I am joined by my good friend of many, many years, European values, Prague's own, Jakob Yanda, here to talk about the Giga Chad, the new president of the Czech Republic, President Peter Pavel, who are all just so excited to see in office now, a former NATO general. And of course, Jakob, you are a reservist, I believe, in the in mm -hmm. the Czech military. Is yeah, that right? Yeah. yeah. So uh -huh. you've got uh -huh. you've got kind of a military background mm -hmm. yourself. So anyway, don't want to do too long an intro. You know, I think the people know you. You're very active on Twitter. Everybody should follow mm -hmm. uh, uh, Jakob. He's a great follow. Um, but before we begin, I just want to say, as always, please comment like, subscribe. It gets these videos seen and keeps the channel growing. So, Jakob, thank you so much for coming on on such short notice. Thank you, Paul, for having me. I'm so happy to be here and share the euphoria which we are having here in Prague because of the new president as well. Right, yeah, yeah just a, a party in the streets. He won by <laughs> such a wide margin, this new, wonderful-looking, grizzled NATO general who's now leading the Czech Republic. So so, so for, for those of us who for whom this came as a surprise. Who is this guy? Who is this incredible new Czech president? I mean, give us the lowdown. What 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 do we need to know basically about President Pavel? Well, you could say that he is actually the most uh, successful, internationally successful Czech soldier we we ever had in our modern history, because he 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 ended up as, as our chief of general staff, which is our uh, like ch chief of joint chiefs in our in our system. So the top top military leader we had, but then he actually got further. So he he got elected to lead the NATO military committee, which is the highest military body within NATO. That's where where the heads of armies or militaries are. Our, our meeting and he was their head he was their chairman for three years uh, so that's the highest level you could ever get actually within NATO if you are a military guy so and if you come from a small country of 10 million in Central Europe from a new NATO member state that's a big win actually so that's what he did till 2018 and he was like well now I can peacefully retire and that's what his wife wanted to, to happen but there was a lot of like public support he was quite well known during the time 2018 and during the time we had a lot of of populist leaders in the Czech presidency, Czech government as well. So honestly, the populist support actually forced him to run. So he did and he won. Yeah. Yeah. So and he had to really ride in on a white horse, right? Because his his opponent, this guy Babish, is kind of well known for being a little bit of a uh, uh, kind of not not a big friend of democracy. Let's say is that is that is that fair to say? You could say uh, actually, Andre Babiš has been the Czech Prime Minister for four years. He, before that, he was the Vice Prime Minister. So he's been in Czech politics for last eight to ten years. He's been very high. He actually he's dominating the central left. He he won uh, several elections himself as well. So uh, he has been a tough challenge. Uh, he actually owns about one third of Czech media because he's an oligarch himself. Uh, so pretty much is a tough tough guy to beat but actually uh, we we got to a very serious fight in the second round of Czech presidential elections where Babish this challenger was actually saying if you elect Pavel this this former general uh, he will bring war to Czech Republic uh, so it was more like a war and peace narrative which was very scary many people actually got scared because actually the war is quite close to us if you sit in Czech Republic if you drive by a car for a couple of hours to the east to Ukraine you are in a war zone. So it, the war is close to us. So people got scared. But still, Pavel won by quite a wide margin, actually. Well, this is this is kind of I mean, it's funny you frame it like that, because really what was what was on offer to the Czechs was fight or flight. Yes. Right. I mean, it mm -hmm. was it was basically are we going to are we going to run with our tail between our legs from the Russians? Or are we going to fight back? Mm -hmm. And the Czechs overwhelmingly voted to fight back and God bless the Czechs for that, right? I mean, this is essentially this. I mean, is it fair to call this election a referendum on, on the Russian invasion of, of Ukraine? Definitely, you can call it that way. Czech Republic, actually, we have, I mean, in our constitutional system, the government led by prime minister is in charge of policy. So that's de facto where the power is. Uh, but the president in our system is more like a ceremonial figure. He is not like a U.S. president who is commanding the whole state and the military. But the president can actually have a lot of informal power, a lot of, he is seen as a head of state, as somebody who, what, is, what it says, actually, many people do listen because he's the president. So actually, he can 
do a lot of, uh, let's say, good talking, which can change policies, and he can informally force the government, led by prime minister, to do the right things or do bad things, as the previous president has been doing. So that's something what is what what the Czech president can do. And when we see Pavel uh, and his profile and people around him as well, you you could basically say he is the most hawkish president uh, actually here for quite a long time, for in recent to twenty years, for sure. And it's like it's like night and day from the previous Czech president, right? I mean, the previous Czech, uh, what was his name again? Z- Z- his name is Miloš Zeman, actually. He's unfortunately still in office, Zeman. but he's done in month and a half from now. In a month and a half, right? And he hmm. and he has these very <laughs> suspicious, very sus <laughs> connections to various oligarchic elements, Chinese Communist Party elements, all this kind of stuff around the world, right? Well, is he that, is, is that we, we call him traitor-in-chief. So basically what he's been doing in, in for last eight to nine years is that he's been trying to bring Russian and Chinese dirty money to Czech Republic. Uh, he has ad- openly advocated for doing more business and blah, blah, blah with Russia and China. He failed completely on that, fortunately. None of that ever came Thank true. He, he even tried to force uh, the, the, the Czech government to actually involve Russia in the build-up of a new nuclear power plant, which would be like, oh. you know, b- selling our sovereignty for 20 to 30 years to Russia, as Hungary has done. So that's something right. what, the, what the current and president who is ending his term in a month and a half, that's what he tried to do. So he's been basically the Russian and Chinese guy as, as the Czech president. Fortunately, he is gone, and you see the public decided to run or to elect the president who is a complete opposite, who is, you could basically say he is a NATO guy in every sense, not only militarily, but geopolitically as well, which is the most important part for us. I mean, it's a civilizational decision. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, the Czechs have basically decisively decided that they're, they're, they're rejecting this whatever mm-hmm. populism that has sweeped the West and all that other crap the way people they're, they're mm-hmm. essentially saying, yeah, no, we're 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 choosing. Yeah. We're choosing the West. We're choosing democracy. Yes, in many ways. Yes. And actually, we are choosing uh, support for, uh, for Ukraine over in right. many ways, our own uh, economic uh, stability, not stability, but the, 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 the comfort zone, I would call it, because uh, you could imagine, you know, we are a country of 10 million welcoming o- almost half a million Ukrainian refugees, which is a lot for the size of our population. Uh, so it's not easy socially and economically here. But despite all of this, Babi was basically saying it's enough. We should, you know, sue for peace and more or less give up on Ukraine, give up on support of Ukraine and all of that. But this message and his own personal profile on that got widely rejected, which is honestly quite great news. And I'm, I'm still amazed by it because I honestly was afraid that uh, this message of scaring people that actually a war will come if you elect the other guy, that's something what might work, but it did not at the end. And, and what, and just what a fantastic thing that it didn't. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, yeah. and it, it, it's such a, it's such a credit to the Czech people mm-hmm. that, that when the, when, when everything was on the line, they said, no, we're going to, we're going to fight. Yeah. So that's that's really exciting. Mm-hmm. Now, now, in contrast with your previous president, who's going to be out of office soon, um, among the first calls made by by President Pavel have been to President Zelensky mm-hmm. and to the president of Taiwan. Yes. Mm-hmm. Is that right? So how did how did I mean, I mean, that, there couldn't be a a greater contrast. I mean, he's he's not even in office yet. He's already hurt the feelings of the Chinese Communist Party. So 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 yeah. so tell us how this has happened. And, and, mm-hmm. and Yakov, I mean, for mm-hmm. those that don't know, mm-hmm. you are you opened the first European think tank office think in tank Taiwan. True. In Taiwan, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is that right? Yeah. So you you are you are on the cutting edge mm-hmm. of let's say European relations with Taiwan mm-hmm. and kind of and kind of helping to reject this now three failed decades of economic integration with the People's Republic of China mm-hmm. that has led to so much destruction. I mean, is that is that fair to say? That, yeah, that- I think that's correct. Uh, so what President-elect Pavel did is that after being elected on, on Saturday, he got the congratula- congratulation messages by basically everybody in the world, which is, which is normal practice. But he decided to actually make four phone calls with other presidents in the first two days. And it was the Slovak president, the Polish president, that's our neighbors, that's our best friends, that's obvious. But then President of Ukraine Zelensky telling him 
I'm coming because the one of the first trips President Pavel will do will be to Kiev. Uh, so that's good. all that's publicly announced. And then the most surprising one to people who don't know him that much is actually the call to President of Taiwan. Because actually that's something what Europeans has of states, even the only elected ones, the ones who are not in office yet, they don't do it. Uh, we never there was never a phone call between Taiwanese president and anybody of this kind of in Europe, which is good. So it sets a new norm. This is doable and we are doing exactly. it. Uh, so that's important part, but it's not only this phone call. It actually goes in the, in line with what the current Czech government is doing for last year and will be doing this year as well, which is openly supporting Taiwan and publicly saying in its even like policy documents, which are public, Czech government is saying we plan to engage Taiwan economically and politically as well, which is a new thing. Everybody in Europe is pretty much scared of the Chinese response, but actually it's Lithuania and Czech, now Czech Republic too, two, two smaller or mid-sized countries saying we will be engaging Taiwan because what's needed is to build this democratic alliance or alliance of like-minded democracies who will be supporting Taiwan. Some will do it with military means like the US and hopefully Japan. Some will do it mainly with political and economic means like Czech Republic and Lithuania because we are quite far and relatively small. But that's something what actually brings it to the table. So for example, in the end of March, the, the Speaker of the Czech Parliament is going to Taiwan as well uh, to actually publicly support Taiwan. Taiwanese democracy too, which is not an easy thing to do because it's easy to, if you are a single parliamentarian, but but you need a majority in the chamber to actually have the speaker go in everywhere in Europe. And we have these majorities in both chambers of our parliament, so our, our speaker is going too. So it's not only our president-elect saying it, which is the biggest, most visible thing, but there are even government officials doing similar things there as well. So I'm quite happy about it. Yeah, it's base Czechia, man. <laughs> the Czechs, the Czech, the Czechs are coming out swinging. I mean, yeah. it's it's so exciting to see. Do you do you at all? I guess you know, in 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 the in the capital, mm -hmm. there are a few busts of great freedom fighters. Mm -hmm. There's Winston Churchill, of mm -hmm. course, but there's also Václav yes. Havel, right? And I mean, we've we've we we greatly admire President mm -hmm. Havel. and now we have President Pavel. Mm -hmm. And I mean, do you do you do you do you see this as something of maybe a Czech tradition? Is this is there a, is there a Czech intellectual leadership that 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 President Pavel is now a inheritor of? I mean, I mean, it, it, should we see this as in line with the great, the, the incredible inspiration that Havel was? Yes, in many ways, yes. Uh, and the interesting part here is that his own personal story is that because in the 80s, he is, he is a son of a, of a family which was deeply communist. They were deeply supporting the Communist Party. And he even grew up, he was a member of the Communist Party here as well. But when the revolution came in 89, he actually uh, was one of the builders of the new democratic Czech military. He got, he got all the engagement with the US military. He, he was uh, one of the military leaders who within new Czech military within NATO. So he, he is kind of a story of the, like, a, I would call it like a new elite of the country. He's only 61. So he's relatively young for a president uh, for in the first term, which gives us hope for maybe a second term, which is what we could do. It's, our terms are five years, so it could be nice 10 years if it goes well, fine. And uh, he pretty much, much uh, embolds. Uh, I mean, we spent last approximately 10 to 15 years here in Prague and here in Central Europe, basically fighting fighting each other in a sense of domestic populace. And we will be having these fights in the future for sure. But uh, as you see in the region here, I mean, uh, Hungary and its government, unfortunately, being a more Russian ally than a NATO ally, bad situation in Slovakia maybe soon as well. So those things are relatively negative in the, in the, in the context of the Russian war here in Europe. Uh, but actually now we have, um, I mean, the president, I wouldn't overestimate it, but he can actually support the government and he could be basically doing these international things, which country of 10 million usually don't do. But if you have strong, strong leaders of these ones, you could actually punch much above your weight, which is exactly what we are doing on Taiwan. Because if you are sitting in Asia, you're like, well, there's a country of 10 million somewhere in Europe which is doing something on Taiwan. That's weird. That's what I got two years ago when I came to Taiwan first to set up our office. There was a think tank. They were like, where do you come from? Chechnya or Czech Czechia? What is it? Right. And yeah, yes, we have yeah. all these things, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, that's understandable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so now it's, it's getting up. That's good. No, I mean, it's, it's funny, right? I mean, it's, I, I, I love how much you have and of course also the lithuanians have and others just like oh so angered the the ccp and the the people's mm -hmm. republic of china because they because i mean they can't 
they can't even fathom the notion. It's like, Germany, get these checks under control. Yep. What the heck? You know, what are they? This, this country of 10 million is, is, it just keeps like, you know, throwing it in our face. And it's like, well, we can't do it. They're sovereign. What do you, I mean, what do you, yep. and we, we, mean, that's, you that's know, we had is, the, we had the know? same issue when, for example, our previous governments were pretty much soft on this, on the CCP. And, yeah. uh, but we had the leaders of the opposition in the parliament or mayor of Prague traveling to Taiwan, supporting Taiwan. And we had Chinese ambassador and Chinese foreign minister calling our leadership here, be it the president, prime minister, telling them, get those guys in line. And they were like, look, we live in the democracy. We have something called the constitution. Right. We can't force mayor of Prague, who is from a different party, not to go to Taiwan. We can't force a speaker of our parliament not to go to Taiwan. He is a sovereign leader as well. So what can you do about it? It's a great yeah. thing. It's a great mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, I mean, I... You, I mean, it, 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 it's it's the anti Orban, yes. right? I mean, mm -hmm. it, it basically it lets you be this intellectual leadership is so important. So, with with regard to the region, as you say, do you do you think that this is like the first sign of new momentum in the region? I guess I guess mm -hmm. I I also to me a lot of this started with the Russian invasion, mm -hmm. right? And kind of what 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 um, Mora Moravitsky. Mm -hmm called mm -hmm. the, the Polish prime minister, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the hungry Poland split. Yes. You know, I mean, I think that I think that for a long time there was this worry that or the Orbanism, this kind of like authoritarian mm -hmm. populist turn was going to get basically protected by Poland. But that stopped. I mean, it's, it's basically decisively stopped. Mm -hmm. And now this I mean, do you do you think do you think that kind of Orban's authoritarian vision for the EU is now on the back. I mean, for the EU, it is. He cannot spread out of Central Europe, but he does spread to Western Balkans, where Orban and his uh, oligarchs and advisors are spreading this basically poisonous disease uh, with political and yeah. intelligence influence of Hungary, Hungarian state, which is yeah. pretty bad. Serbia in particular, In Serbia, right? but they are pushing in Macedonia yeah. as well, in Bosnia. It's pretty hostile for what the Hungarian state does over there. But actually, if you look to Central Europe, you could say, yes, Hopefully, now we'll have a more deeper Czech-Polish alliance, which is at the president-to-president -president level, but also government government as well uh, because we are both strong supporters of Ukraine in not only politically material support there's so there's so much weapons we are giving to Ukraine or sending to Ukraine even as a relatively small country of 10 million uh, in good cooperation with Poland so those things will be happening the phase we have is that in the fall there'll be Slovak parliamentary elections which might end up pretty badly so Orban might get his best friend uh, Victor or uh, sorry uh, Robert Fico former prime minister of Slovakia going back to power in Slovakia, and that would oh, mean God. Orban would have Slovakia as his best ally, uh, which would be bad. But the, uh, in the in Prague, you know, we'll have this president for at least five years who actually hates Orban. He says it publicly with different words. Right. He even yeah. said publicly that when he, when Pavel was thinking about whether to run or not, he said, "Look, I'm seeing what Orban is doing in Hungary. I don't want Czech. I do not want Czech Republic to become Hungary under Orban in a way of you know uh, his domestic opponents running the same way. So I'm running. Orban is one of the reasons I'm running for a president. So and and for example." Something what is, has been not so we, uh, publicly visible during the campaign here is that in December, which is like a month before the election, so really hot part of the campaign, candidate Peter Powell actually went to Budapest, to Hungary, and he met the NGOs, the civil society leaders, the independent media. He talked with them about what Orban does to them, and he was like openly on display in the center of Budapest over there uh, during the hot part of the campaign. So you see, you see how public, how personally important it is to him, and now he is our president, which I'm very happy about. Because he has spine, he has balls on that. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. huge. That's mm -hmm. huge, and I mean it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what you can do, even without kind of like really serious formal political power, just from like the perch of president. Mm -hmm. When you're willing to go see President Zelensky, when you're willing to go to Budapest, mm -hmm. when you're willing to go to Taiwan, and so on and so mm -hmm. forth, and and kind of be that symbol of of freedom that that sort of. The Czech Republic represents again going back to the image of President Havel, mm -hmm. who, who also very yep. much was that for the world. Um, so I'm I'm very hopeful that that he'll he'll follow in that legacy. So to to sum, Jakub, what are the what are the top priorities of this of the of the Pavel administration mm -hmm. 
as you understand it? For him, uh, it is, I mean, outside of domestic stuff, for on the inter international stage, it's first on Ukraine because that's the biggest war we have in our neighborhood. Yeah. So it's really about supporting Ukraine politically, material-wise as well. He's saying he wants Ukraine na in NATO in the future. And he knows what it means Great. because he's the guy who who represents NATO in every in a political and military sense. So he knows what it means. So, so Ukraine first, that's the, the top priority. But second really will be, in some cases, uh, support of Taiwan, because he understands how Taiwan is important as a democracy, but also as a, as a defender against the, the CCP uh, aggression in, in the region as well. Um, and uh, that's something what is, uh, what is quite unique. You don't have European presidents openly supporting Taiwan at all. Sometimes you have governments like the one in Lithuania or the one in Prague now. But our, our role here as, as Czechs is some, some, somewhere to, let's say, hopefully inspire, but basically to show to others in, in Europe, mainly Germany, that it is possible to engage with Taiwan. It's possible to support Taiwan, and China will not destroy you for that, which is the biggest fear of much yep. of the German political and business elite. Uh, and that's why European China policy is so weak and corrupted because we are like, well, we will do nothing and maybe China will be nice. But that's not the case. We see it's not happening. It's, we see this, fail po this policy is failing. So the only hope we have as a small country is to really support Taiwan with everything we have and hope that other bigger European countries will say, well, maybe it does make sense. And yes, not only morally, but strategically as well, because we do not want to end up in a, in a prison of, uh, of, of Chinese economic blackmail, which is exactly what China is already doing. It's an excellent point. It's mm -hmm. so important to, to, to demonstrate that. And I think y'all, and then of course, Lithuania mm -hmm. has been yes. um, uh, an important... Uh, test case of of just actually at the end of the day how few tools China has to enforce its will. I mean, there there's kind of this this fear. It's it's much it's much like we overestimated mm -hmm. Russia. Yes, right. I mean, we we wildly mm -hmm. overestimated the power of Russia, and now now the second largest military in the world is being defeated by you know this this great ragtag <laughs> Ukrainian group of freedom fighters. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 it's it's the same with China. At the end of the day, China's all talk yeah. when they actually when they actually try to enforce things. Turns out we are holding so many more cards yeah. than we think. So so I, and I think I think, you know, President Pavel couldn't have been and this Czech leadership couldn't come at a better time mm -hmm. because it is a time where I was in Brussels a few months ago where you get the feeling uh, among sort of the, the Eurocrat <laughs> elite even that it's like the time has come to get serious on Russia and China. Yep. I mean, I couldn't believe it. It was like it mm -hmm. was like a night and day from just a few years ago. So I mm -hmm. think I think Berlin will be the last ones to come yep. around. But even they, I think, will come. I around. hope so. And our but job I, but, as as like mid-sized countries and democracies and their allies, our job is to show them the mirror, which we are on Russia and Ukraine, and we will be on China and Taiwan. Because honestly, Europe can talk about how much we support democracies, how much how much we do not want the change of the international liberal order, but we need to do something about it. We need to defend it, and defending for now is easy and cheap because China is not killing people yet. I mean, it is in, inside China and with the genocide, but outside of China, they yeah. are not openly waging um, a hot war, a kinetic war, which they are preparing for. So we need to, we can deter them now. Otherwise, we fail in deterrence like we did on Ukraine, and we will see tens of thousands of dying because we failed and we were cowards before that, which which is our European problem long term. So I think that's the that's the reason why we need so much of political support for Taiwan now. Absolutely. And I mean, it's a it's a it's a global problem. right? I mean, I, I, I guess I, you know, I, I've said before, I'll say again, I'll say I'll say until I'm blue in the face. We because the Ukrainians turned out to be this incredibly brave, yeah. you know, people, it, despite the fact that we ate all the Russian disinformation about them and everything, you know, um, we have we dodged yes. a bullet. If Ukraine had fallen, we, we that could have been. The incursion into NATO after that, that could mm -hmm. have been the, the, the massive make or break moment for global security, possible World War Three, all that kind of stuff. I mean, the Ukrainians prevented yes. a much larger scale, much more dangerous scenario mm -hmm. by fighting like they did. Now, Taiwan, we, I mean, we've got to deter that mm -hmm. one. We've got to yep. deter it. That's, I mean, that's, that's, it, it's absolutely necessary. Let's not let this mm -hmm. happen again. So you're absolutely right. Um, we, should, we should take this lesson and get serious. And you know what? I think we are. 
I think that's what President Pavel, I think that's why everybody's so excited about what the Czechs have decided, because that's what they're seeing here, is that we're learning our lessons. Yes, yes. And I finally. mean, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. It, finally! Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it took a lot of death. You know, it took a lot of Ukrainians shaking us and trying to wake us up, but it does feel like we're learning it. So, mm -hmm. Jakob, thank you so much for coming on. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, my man. And I want to say congratulations to you, because at a time when the Czech Republic was in a tough place yep. And, yep. And, was, and was trending in a, in a bad direction, you were a soul voice alone in the woods <laughs> crying, no, democracy, human rights, the rule of law. And, yeah. and now it seems... The, it seems the Czechs have caught up to yeah, you. Not only me, so there are more than more than, more people than me doing it, but the, the, we were a minority in the past calling out about the Russian and Chinese absolutely. threats. Absolutely. And now, honestly, we are people who believe same things about these threats and defending from them are leading our country. They are the president. They are the government. They are leading our parliament. So I don't feel honestly alone in here at, anymore. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, mm -hmm. but but it's but it's because of your intellectual mm -hmm. leadership. It's because you created a space mm -hmm. within kind of the. The, the Czech intellectual mm. paradigm for for mm. for doing this that it ultimately grew 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 yep. grew grew and now it's now it's running the country <laughs> which is which is yep. fantastic so congratulations thank you. thank you yeah thanks again for coming on thanks the show thanks so much Paul thank Talk you soon bye bye yeah.